All right, welcome back. So now we're going to get PHP to talk to MySQL. So the first thing I want you to do is open up PHP My Admin. You might already be on there from the last lesson. If not, just click on that little icon down there, PHP My Admin. And I want you to click on the Home button. I'm already at the Home page, but I just thought I'd click on it again. And click on Privileges, because we want to create a user. Because we're going to connect to MySQL Server, we need a username and password. We could just go with the default root user, but this will be a little bit better. So we'll create, who doesn't have a password by the way, when you create a MySQL server or install it for the first time, you have to actually set a password, but there's no use on your local machine. So just leave leave that as is. So we'll create our new user. And we, I'm just gonna call mine Lima, cause that's what I normally call it. And the host we'll be connecting from will always be local. Sometimes in your life, you might get a hosting company who might say to you, you have to connect via this IP address or this, um, internet address and this port and that can happen but n hardly ever you're always connecting from localhost trust me so don't even worry about that that much it just means that you're connecting this the connection is local to uh, the machine you're running the PHP on so let's just give this a password as well I'm just going to give my password the password of password <laughs> uh, just make things a lot easier for us so password password and then I just hit Oh, I don't hit generate, sorry, down there. Just leave that as is, and don't hit none as well. Just just leave everything as well down there. All we want to do is we just want to check all these because we want to give privileges to this user. We want them to be able to do pretty much everything. So it's going to be a super user. He'll be able to do anything he wants. So we'll just hit go, and that will create that user. So Limax has been created, and he has permissions on everything, so he can do anything he wants, which is what we want. Generally... You know, your account won't have that many privileges, but you can pretty much do the CRUD operation, which is pretty much all you need to do um, when you're working with databases. So that's all done. We've got our user created. So let's let's connect to uh, MySQL. Now we should be able to just connect to the server using the, the MySQL functions in PHP pretty damn easily. So first thing we're going to need is we're going to need somewhere to hold on to our connection. So we can create a variable, and I'm just going to call it not connection, connection, there we go. And we'll say equals, and we're going to uh, call a function now. So I'll just go MySQL connect, which is the MySQL connect function. This function takes three parameters. I think you might have a few other ones that you can actually plonk in there. But um, basically, they're all just strings, and they're just things that allow us to connect. It's kind of like just connecting to anything you connect to on, on the internet. First, you have to tell it how you're going to connect to it, and you're going to connect to it connect to it via um, localhost. So you just work in localhost and then you have to give your username. So the user that we created was Lemac and the password was password. So that's all created. And then we just close him off, semicolon on the end. And basically what that is going to do is going to create the connection. So we'll have a little resource here and it'll, it'll actually return a true or false uh, to allow us to do an if test on it to see if the connection has failed. So I'm going to do that now. So we'll just do a simple if test, so if, um, whoops, connection, oh, sorry, we'll go if not connection, okay, we want it to basically die, we don't want it to continue on anymore, so we'll go die, and we'll go error, um, connecting to server, or well, we'll say database, my, no, we'll say database server, doesn't matter. And then all I want to do is I just want to um, concat or stick on to the end of this, uh, the MySQL error that it will spit out MySQL. This actually, all this function does is collect the last error message that happened in MySQL. So it'll allow us to see if we do a mistake. And it just, giving yourself error messages, especially right now, is very handy for you because you could see what you've done wrong and it just makes things easy to fix. But we'll see what actually happens here. So we're going to get a whole lot of nothing right now. So we've got nothing there. But... If I, because the connection actually passed, so if not, I could even do an else here to say that the connection, you know, did pass, you know, because we know it did. So echo connected to database. So we'll just see that now. You'll be able to see that with your own eyes. Bink. So we know we're getting, we definitely know we're getting a connection there. There's no problems there. And one way, other way you could see that as well is that if I delete, say that, and I try to connect with an invalid username, what will happen now? I'll actually get an error. See that? Could not connect. Da 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 da. Access controlled. 
using password, yes, there was no thing. It actually says here denied for that user using password. So you get the error message back. Um, you can actually you can suppress error messages as well. They are they are heavy on PHP. They do slow things down sometimes, but you can get rid of that ugly one at the top and just use your error message if you like, rather than having the actual PHP error message as well. See what happened there when I put that at symbol there? Just makes it die the the PHP error basically just dies silently and allows you to use your own custom error. So that's pretty cool. But for the time being we'll leave we'll leave that off. So we'll just change this back to Lemac and make sure we're all connected. Okay, so obviously we've established <coughs> sorry, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> I got the dry throat, I might have a bit of water. Oh. That's good. It's really hot in Australia today. It's actually, I think it's 35 today, and I haven't got any um, air con in this house I'm renting, so I'm just in here. It's getting a bit hot. <clears throat> and yeah, but it's all cool. So let's move on. All we have to do now is we've connected to the server. We want to select our database. Okay, so we've connected to the server, but we haven't selected which database we want to use. And of course, we've got privileges to use all the databases, so we're never going to have any trouble. So what we have to do now is just test the connection. So we can go if not MySQL select DB and we say the database name, we're just calling another another function here and this is going to return a true or false as well. Uh, and what do we call our database? Tumble log. Okay, just close that off. Actually I'll go back here. Um, so now if it doesn't connect we can actually say die again and we can actually just get the the MySQL error. I'll, I won't put any other error on there. Oh, actually I will. We'll put um, error connecting to database. And we'll just go dot and MySQL. Whoops. You must be nervous. MySQL error. So there we go. And I'll just um, refresh that. And we get no error because there's no error. But if I took off that, we get an invalid name, we're going to get an error. Unknown database, tumble log. So it basically tells you the error. So you, you know what's going on. So this little function is very nifty. It just tells you the error. Um, all right. So And of course, you can see a list of all those functions in MySQL manual course so you can see get a scroll down here have a look and of course you can you can just append anything you want to the php.net website and you'll end up at that um that function so if you're in here and you're just like this and you select that bit out whoops copy that and you go to php.net and i paste that in there like that it's going to come up so it tells us all about it that's the actual function tells us what it returns a boolean as we already know true or false Da, da 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 tells you everything you need. You can actually, oh yeah, you can. There's actually another parameter we can actually throw on there, which is actually the the connection parameter. So we could actually just say you don't need to, but you know, there we go. So we can actually just throw that connection on there, and it's not going to change anything, but it's going to specifically say that we're connecting to this um, database via this connection. <coughs> All right, so moving on. Now what we want to do is we want to maybe select out some data first. So the first thing we're going to have to do before we select our data is actually insert some data. But we're not going to insert it with PHP straight off the bat. We're going to start off with a select statement because I think it's the easiest. So we're just going to uh, PHP my admin again and I'm just going to throw in some data in here. So I'm just going to go to insert. Uh, we'll just throw in um, anything here. Uh, went for a walk today, tab, yeah, had a fun walk this morning, it was nice, maybe a tad too many flies. I didn't have any air guard on, and if you don't know anything about Australia, or if you do, <laughs> you don't have air guard on right now, and you're living down um, in Victoria, and you're going for walks in the bush. A uh, lot flies, a <laughs> lot. So I actually went with my mum this morning. I met up with her and we went for a walk. It was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, the, too many flies. We didn't have air guard on. 
So we'll just, we'll just set a username. I just set a date there. See, I just clicked on that little box there and we were able to set a date and time. So we'll just create um, an, a user. We haven't got a user yet, but we'll just, we know the first user is going to be ID number one. We just, we just know that. So we'll just set that like that. We don't need to set an ID for this because MySQL already knows this is an auto increment field and it will fill that in for us. So just hit go once you've done that. And that has inserted that into our database. So we'll just have a look here. And yeah, we can see that all in there. So that's pretty cool. So now what we want to do is we want to select that out. So we're going to use some SQL here. Uh, it's, it's structured query language, they call it. So we just need a variable to hold it. It's basically just a string that we're going to pass to another function. And PHP is going to be able to tell MySQL what we want from it. So we'll just call our string, uh, our variable query. Okay, and we'll just do an equal sign and it's going to be a string. So we'll just create our string there. And let's just do it. So we just go select, okay, and if we do an asterisk, it'll select all the columns or all the fields out of the database, okay. And by columns, I don't mean rows. I actually mean the columns, the ID, title, body, da 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 da. It, we're going to select all the rows out anyway, but you can actually stop that. There's where clauses and things like that that we'll look at. But select asterisk just means we're going to select everything basically from the, all the columns from the database. So select asterisk from our table name, so posts, and that's all we need. That's going to select the posts from our table. Okay, we've only got one in there right now, but that simple thing, it actually just reads like English, select asterisk, which just means everything, uh, all columns from posts. Easy as. And now we've got a string there, but that's not talking to MySQL yet. We need a function. So of course, PHP's got another function that allows us to um, to do that. So what we can do is we can we can pass in uh, another another function. So and we want we want the result back from that. So we'll call this variable result, okay equals, and the function is MySQL query. So it's quite easy, and it kind of makes sense as to why I called that variable query now because that's our query. We're passing it into the query function, so it all makes sense. So if we just grab that variable throw him in there. Now we're getting a uh, resource back. Basically, if we get an error, we're going to get a uh, false back. It's kind of got a, a few few things it sends back to you, depending on what you get back. But right now, we're going to get um, our result. So I'll just, I'll just print this out, and we'll actually see what we actually get back. It's just going to be a resource, okay? And we're going to need another function to actually look through that resource and find the result back. So we'll just go in here and we'll just do a refresh and see how we've got a resource. We've got a resource ID of three, which is completely fine. And all we need to do now is access that resource. So inside that resource, there's actually a result in there. Okay, so there's a result in there and that's what we want to, um, that's what we want to uh, co collect back. So PHP has, an, has another function that will allow us to do that. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to go row okay so this is one of our rows so we're just going to create a variable there and I'm just going to go mysql fetch array so this is going to look into our result okay of what we've got back um, and basically it's going to turn that result into an array for us this function has another cool little nifty thing it does for us that we'll see in a minute when we iterate over um, a couple of posts in our database. So now we've done that, we'll actually do a print R of what we get back now, just to show you. So it's all about what you're getting back and what you're giving to when you're doing any sort of programming. It's That's all you've got to think. You're thinking, what am I giving to the program and what's it giving back to me and what can I do with this? And when you think like that, um, it just makes things so much easier. So we'll, we'll refresh now what we get back. So let's turn that resource into a result, it's just an array, and we've looked at arrays in the other lessons. Have a look, oh, I'll just get that into screen. I'm just viewing the source here so we can see it easier. Um, yeah, so it's sent back um, just like a hash array, like a, a, a text array, so we can access, you know, via the, uh, the column name, or we can access um, via the, the integer array, just, you know, zero all the way up to, to four, whatever, however many columns there are. But we can access it easily now. So to access that array, you know how to do that. You just got to pass in the key and get the value back. So we can pass in the key to get the ID back, pass in the key to get the title back, pass in the key to get the body, the created at, whatever. So it's that easy. So let's let's do that now. 
So I'll just go in here and we'll change this into an echo. And now all we need to do is turn these into the names of the columns. So we know we've got that array back. And if you get stuck, do that print R array thing and you'll see what you have to what you're trying to access. So now we're just going to print back the title here. Echoing back, that's you know that's got the array in it, and we're just going to echo out the title with the key. So now when I refresh, we just get the title back. See that? So it's that simple. It's just and it's fun too. Like it's nothing hard. We'll put a we'll put a break tag on the end of this, and we'll just copy that, and we'll throw in there, and we'll just go body as well here. Do you see what I mean? We're actually just simple stuff. And there's the body of the document. You could even throw you know, change that to a H, it's going to be the ending one, so H2, and I'll change that to a H2. Now when we look at this, you see what I mean? We're actually just building quickly as like a post and all that. Of course you can add style sheets and all sorts of stuff, but you're getting, you're getting the basics, basics of it right now, um, which is great. So we've got all that done. I'll just remove this one because there's no need for that anymore. And what, what, what I'm going to do now is we're going to actually look at what else this function does because I want to iterate over a, a few results. So what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll just insert another um, post. So we'll go to insert um, and I'll just say whatever, according some shoots today. Just recording some lessons with some some friends, some friends. Okay. So I'll also I'll just set the dates as well. So we've got dates and times and stuff, and we'll set that to user number one, which we'll come back to when we create a user, so we can link the two tables together. So that's all saved there. So we've got two posts in there now. So this will still work. Okay, it still works and still comes up. But now we've got two in there. So we want this our multiple results in our table. All we need is a simple while loop. So if I go in here, set up my while loop, pass in my condition, okay, this magical function it does an, another thing as well. It actually will return true, but it'll grab each um, of the results from the query. So it'll turn them into an array, but it won't just grab the first one. It'll actually grab all of them and it'll allow us to iterate over them in a while loop. It just moves the, the array pointer head across. But you can see it in action. If I just throw this in here, you'll actually see what happens. So it's going to iterate over both now. See that? So that while loop allowed us to, to go because this condition was true twice. There was a row once, there was a row twice. So it just iterated over them easily. So it's got a little bit of voodoo magic in it, this little function here, but once you, once you use it once, you understand how, how it works. And that's the thing. Once you see how something runs like that, it just makes sense to you. And then you're able to do other things with it. Like I'm sure in your head right now, you're thinking, oh my God, I can do stuff now in, in MySQL already. Uh, and all you have to do is just follow the manual, basically. It's so easy to, to do, but just a lot of fun as well. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we've done that. I want to... Um, Maybe we can update something, okay? Or insert. We'll insert. We'll insert another row, okay? We'll insert something. I'm just trying to think of what would probably be the best way. So we'll do an insert now. So I'll just get rid of this while loop. We won't need it. So I'll just comment it out for now, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to comment out this as well, and I'll just copy it and there so now basically we just have some copies so we're not you know going over all this stuff again I'll even move this out the way so it's not in our way all right so move that up so I just want everyone's eyes in this part here so we want to do an insert so PHP I mean MySQL and SQL sorry has an as an insert command. Just as it has a select out, you can insert stuff. So let's do an insert into, and you just say the table name, posts, and then we can we can set 
different data. Okay, so we could say set um, title equals um, what a great day or something. I don't know. What can we say? Um, my budgie. My budgie is in his cage. I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm just looking around the room for something to say. So we'll just say that. My budgie is in his cage. And we'll just hit, put a comma in there to, to separate the columns. And I'll just do an enter as well so we can kind of kind of see all this stuff. Maybe if we put another... Just so we can kind of see what's, um, what's going on. Um, so title equals... We'll actually move this down one more as well. Maybe indent that. All right, so now we could say body um, equals, um, what else could I say? He looks very happy. He looks very happy and cheeky because he's bloody cheeky, that bird. He's funny ass. <laughs> so there we go. I hope he doesn't start squawking again. He was squawking in the first... Here we go. Can you hear him? I don't know if you can hear that. He's just chirping a little bit. He looks very happy. He all looks very cheeky. Okay, so we'll do another comma and we'll set up um, our created at. So created at. And this one's going to be a little bit different. We're going to actually use a MySQL function and we're going to say created now. So it was created at this point. And we'll just set the user ID uh, to one. Okay, user ID equals one. So that's all set up now with we can insert the data into posts set the title the body created at as long as we run that query everything um, will be fine and we'll actually see that see that work if it doesn't work we can get an error message so if, if we say if not result okay result oops we'll just go echo oops just go echo, we won't even, we just need the error, so we'll just go MySQL, error. So let's see what happens here. Oh, we'll do an else as well, else, okay, this is really funky, this program, <laughs> echo, um, um, added, added row. So we'll just go in here and we'll just do a refresh. So added row. So our query was correct and it actually added in a row. And to actually be able to see that um, in action, but we won't we won't run that again because if we run that again, it's just going to add it in um, multiple times. So what I'll do is I'll just comment out all this stuff because we'll go back to that and I'll uncomment out this stuff. We'll grab this one so we can actually query the database again. So you know when I comment all this stuff out it's not going to run. So we'll just have a look now what happens. See that? So there's the last result that we just added in via um, MySQL. So to add stuff in, very easy. So we can easily add things into our database. We'll look at um, MySQL and a special uh, special function, uh, MySQL real escape string that will stop people from killing our database, doing SQL crazy attacks on them and things uh, when we turn all these into, into functions. So we've got an insert there, so that's all fine. So what I'll do is I'll just cancel that out, cancel that out, and we'll just cancel this out for now as well. Or actually, no, we'll just leave it in. So let's just do an update now on a query. So we'll just grab all this junk in there. Trust me, we'll turn all this into nice functions and everything. And everything will be sweet. So we want to do an update now. So you can say update. Okay, update posts. Set title. We'll just we'll get rid of all this. We won't need won't update everything. We'll just update the title. Update 
post set title equals um, what else can we change this to? My budgie is out of his cage. So that's just basically going to update that post, but first we have to reference that post. Now remember we have um, we have primary keys, okay? So we can we can reference those posts with that. And for that we can use a where clause. So where ID equals now we don't know the ID of this just yet. We have no idea of the ID of this. So we can come in here, go into posts, and we can browse in here. And we can just have a look at the ID. So the ID is number three, which I knew was going to be anyway, but I thought I'd just go in there. Add there's another way, we could have just posted out the ID on here and also when you insert data MySQL's got a, a last insert uh, function that allows you to see the last ID added in and we'll have a look at that definitely in this lesson. So where ID equals 3. Okay, if I was going to update multiple lines okay, we'll just I'll add in another line now just to show you. So if I was going to update the body as well, so I'll we'll turn this to body, body you'd need a comma on the end there and the last one you don't need a comma on the end okay so body uh, we'll just some body text okay so that's that's going to do the update for us pretty simply now so we'll have our, our nice update and we'll all be running perfectly hopefully so let's have a look alright my budgie it said added row because I that's what we echoed out here. I should have said updated row. Oops. I won't edit it out though, I'll just leave that in. But we'll just update it again. It doesn't matter if it updates multiple times, but you can see it's completely changed. My budgie is in out of his cage. Well, we'll fix that up. <laughs> I'm thinking of too many things right now. My budgie is in is out of his cage. Oops. He's out of his cage some body text. So we'll just refresh that. See that? So we're easily updating text and things and the queries are really really simple. Um, what else do we have to do? We have to delete something out of um, our database. So we've selected stuff out, we've updated it, we just needed to um, delete some stuff now and then we can turn all these into cool functions and we can really move on to getting this thing up and going or thinking about how we're going to structure the application itself. So we'll just go delete now, so change the name, delete um, from posts where id equals 3. Oh, we'll do a join before we stop. We'll go back to the select query and we'll do a join on those, on those tables. Okay, so delete from post where it equals three. So we'll just say deleted post if it works, which it will. Deleted or deleted row will do. So we'll just do refresh, and that row's been deleted now because of that query. So simply just reference the ID of it, and you can totally just delete it out. So we'll just cancel him out. We'll come down here. And what I'll do now is we're going to do a join. So I'll come in here and we'll create a user. So we'll just insert and we could have done a query for it, but this will just be a little bit quicker. Just username, password can be anything. I'm just going to use password again. And we'll just say email address. We'll just do Lee at non.com. Just put in anything, it doesn't need to be put anything. Well, my bird just flew onto my back. <laughs> Did you see that? I don't even know if you could hear that, but he's flying around the house right now and he's having a blast. So I'll just submit that and that's gone in and we're back. So we've got our row in there now. So now we just want to join them together. So it's quite easy to do that. All we want to do is say select from from post, but we don't want to do an asterisk anymore. Once we start mixing tables together, we want to start accessing the columns themselves, and we want to uh, because some, like uh, for instance, this in our posts table. I'll open up our little diagram we had. Where's our diagram at? Ah, oh, I didn't mean to open it up like that. Sorry, folks. It's going to open up in Fireworks. 
but it doesn't matter. We'll just go with the flow here. Yeah. So I'll just bring him in, and in our database, see how some of the things have the same name, like created at, created at the same name, and ID and ID for user. That's going to really mess things about in MySQL because it's not going to know what you're talking about. So you need to make sure you you say what what you're talking about. So we'll just um, go back in here and we'll go select posts, okay, and then the the column we want. So we want a title from posts, okay. What else do we want from posts? We want posts. We want a body, and we know it's got a body. And from the users table, okay. So users, um, we want a username, okay. And we may. Uh, oh no, we won't. We won't take the ID yet. Oh, we can take the ID from. Yeah, so we'll just go posts dot user ID. Oops. So this is all getting bunched off. We'll close that off, and we'll come back here. That was a better idea closing that off. <laughs> Crazy, <laughs> having that open this whole time. But um, yeah, so you can easily see that we're selecting. All those uh, columns from our table posts. We've got post title, post body, post username, or posts user ID, and users. We want the username. So we're going to have to say from posts, okay? And we're also selecting from the users. So we go users. So that will allow us to select both from there. So now it will connect, but we also need to do a connect. So we've got to say this is the actual where clause, uh, where user, we should say posts dot user ID equals users dot ID. So that should make sense to you because they both connect through the table. So if we go to this diagram again, I'll just bring this up. You can see that user ID is connected to that ID there. So that should pretty much makes sense to you guys. All right, so we've got all that done. So now what we can do is we can go dot br and then we can go in here and go username, oops. And we are going to have an effect. So you can see that. So it's selected it out and we've got our users who have posted. So Lemax posted two posts. But you can kind of see how all this is coming together and um, yeah, we're, we're really, really getting there now. So just need to do forms and stuff and we need to sit down and think about our application. I think that's going to take maybe an hour or two seriously because I want to do a function-based application, I'm going to have to explain MVC and stuff. So hopefully you stick around, hopefully you're enjoying this. If you've never done any um, PHP and, and MySQL before, you'd definitely be learning a thing or two, I think. So hopefully you're enjoying it, I'm enjoying doing it, and I can't wait to see you at the next lesson uh, where we'll turn all of these into functions and we'll start up a little library for our application and we'll get moving from there. So. I'll I'll see you at the next lesson and we'll yeah keep moving along with PHP and MySQL